Is your home a wreck and your to-do list overflowing? And everywhere you look, there's a million things you should be doing and you have no clue where to start. I hear you. But there is hope and a path forward. Hi, I'm Misty Winkler from Simply Convivial. I have a blog, YouTube channel, and podcast all about staying engaged and cheerful in the work of managing home and family life. We don't need to be overwhelmed. And even when we do feel pulled in a million directions, there is a path forward in grateful obedience to the wonderful calling that we have from God and the vocation of being a wife, mother, and homemaker. We can dig in and enjoy living out that calling. Right here is where you find encouragement and maybe a swift attitude kick in the pants to help you do just that. If that's what you need, hit subscribe, the like button, and leave a comment and tell me what is making you feel pulled in a million directions and tell me one five minute thing you can do to make that better. You'll get some ideas in this episode and I'd love to hear which one you're gonna do next. So I bet I'm not the only one who's stood in the middle of the house just staring. Everywhere I look, there was a task screaming for my attention. Every room needed to be decluttered, cleaned, organized. It felt like there wasn't a single thing that was the way it was supposed to be. The to-do list is so long, it's impossible to know where to start. And that's just the to-do list that's written on paper. The mental to-do list kept in my head was even longer. It left me feeling like I was walking under a sense of impending doom. There really was no such thing as catching up. I had zero chance of even knowing, much less doing, all the things I felt I ought to be doing. If you find yourself in a similar place where you have multiple responsibilities, all with many duties, many tasks, some urgent, some important, many unlisted and possibly even unknown, so that you feel overwhelmed by life, there is hope. You can get on top of it. However, it will take more than an hour more than a day, and getting on top of it will look different than you probably imagine. However, there are four steps that will help give you direction when you feel pulled in a million directions. So grab a basket of laundry to fold or stand in front of the sink and just do the dishes while we talk about those four things that we can do. Let's dig in. We all often feel pulled in a million directions. Parenting, cooking, cleaning, laundry, errands, church, activities, all put things on our plate and take time in our day. However, we have to remember that good work is supposed to take our time and our energy. Our time and our energy is not our own to spend at our discretion and pleasure so that work obligations to other people our impositions on our personal resources. Rather, those personal resources are given to us that we may give them to others. The whole point of having time and energy is to spend it on others in service to God for God's glory. So the first thing we can do is declutter our thinking. When you're overwhelmed, your first impulse might be to ignore most of the responsibilities that weigh on your mind. After all, you can only work on one at a time, right? Focus means ignoring what you're not working on, right? It's true, but focus isn't the first step. Before you're able to focus, you have to clear your head and free your mind and emotions from the burden of holding on to vague obligations. Telling yourself, 
I have too much to do, or I'm being pulled in a million directions, makes focus and attention impossible. It justifies worry and stress rather than dealing with it. Worry is dealt with through prayer. Prayer is the vacuum that runs over the crumbs of worry. If the crumbs aren't cleaned up afterwards, then the vacuum's filter is clogged. It's part of the nature of prayer that it removes worry and aligns our heart and our minds with God's will for us. Sometimes our prayers are ineffective or our stress remains because we haven't taken the time to even realize what our worries are. We don't know what to pray for. The vague overwhelm has turned off our ability to think and pray. A baby step action to clear your heart and mind and to clear the way for effective prayer is to brain dump. Begin listing those million things pulling at your mind. As you name them, they lose their grip on you. You become the one in the driver's seat able to pray about them specifically. Try it. It works. Step number two then is to focus on what matters. After you've decluttered your head with brain dump and prayer, you are ready to focus. Focus is a matter of zeroing in on things that matter and letting the multitude of small, insignificant things happen as they may. More of those small things will actually be taken care of when you focus on and start with the tasks that matter most. If you start with all the little things, you'll never get to the big important things. And so you will feel like a hamster on a hamster wheel getting nowhere. But the most important thing to focus on, the place we need to begin, is not on specific tasks or chores, but on our attitudes and our internal story. Our attention, our focus, is a function of our internal narrative. What are we saying about our life, about our jobs, about our tasks? Is that helping or hindering? Is it true or is it false? True focus comes as a result of knowing our purpose and the significance of our work. It comes from knowing the real story that we're in and being happy to live it out faithfully. Step number three, take a baby step. When your head is clear and wrapped around your true responsibilities and purpose, you can begin to move forward effectively. Often we want overnight change, a fresh restart where we begin to do everything rightly and completely from now on. But that's not how change actually happens. So we're setting ourselves up for disappointment and discouragement when we have such unrealistic expectations. Instead, we need to choose baby steps. We need to take a small action that begins movement in the right direction. It doesn't matter if we aren't doing everything that we should be doing, as long as we start doing something we should be doing. Some is better than none. All or nothing will get you nothing. Progress is better than perfect. Choosing baby steps is choosing to put our perfectionistic tendencies and temptations to death. Once we get started, we'll make more informed and realistic adjustments along the way, increasing our momentum and progress. It's just not effective to not begin until there's a perfect, figured out, complete system in place to handle everything. It is effective to start with a small next step and then follow that up with another. And that's how progress is made in the real world. Step four, iterate. Once progress begins with baby steps, we're able to iterate, to adjust, to figure it out as we go along. Having rejected the temptation to set up a complete system that will never actually implement, we get to create a system that works on the fly as we practice and see what does and doesn't work for us right now. By setting up routines and productivity habits one by one, we're not defeated by an overly ambitious total life makeover. Each new habit and routine supports the next. Each change we make gives us more information about how we work best 
and what we really do need. Iteration, not total planned out systems work because life changes. Our plans have to adapt. So starting with the intention of adapting as we go helps us roll with the punches of real life without giving in to discouragement that our perfectionist, unrealistic expectations didn't work out. Each step of the way with these four steps, you begin to realize that progress is possible. You can put routines and habits in place that will help you deal with the myriad of responsibilities and obligations that you have. Put those routines and habits in place incrementally and from a place of satisfaction and clarity and joy rather than frustration and discouragement. The plan itself is never actually going to work. You're gonna have to do the work. (laughs) The plan is just a reminder to you that you must work and it gives you an idea of what you should work on next. Weekly reviews, daily cards, and other productivity practices that I'll link to for your next video will help even as life gets busier and busier. And no matter which of those productivity practices you decide to pick up next, the same process works. Declutter, focus, do, and iterate. Do you get caught in an endless thought loop about how unending and frustrating and pointless your work at home is? You need to stop that, but it's actually terribly hard to do so. It's your internal narrator and you need to switch out the story that internal narrator is telling you so that you tell yourself a true story instead of a lie. The first module of my course, Organize Your Attitude, is all about telling yourself a true story and stopping the false stories that play in our heads by default. It's called Declutter Your Story, and I would love to give you free access to this module because I think it is key to being happy, joyful homemakers in the midst of busy, crazy, messy home life. The point of homemaking isn't to create a perfect aesthetic that's never disturbed. The point is to create and build up people. And that's a messy process. Go to simplyconvivial.com story or find the link below to get access to this one module from my course that will help you get your head screwed on straight as you roll up your sleeves and dig in to repent, rejoice, repeat.